So again, I'd like to convey my appreciation to Heidi and the organizers um, for having me here today. Um, uh, certainly, I feel um, absolutely uh, like I don't know anything about design and architecture amongst all these brilliant speakers here. Um, I'm just a scientist and an engineer who's um, uh, looking to make a contribution. So I feel really overwhelmed amongst all these amazingly creative and uh, brilliant people. So thank you for uh, this opportunity to be here today. But I guess this is how I see beauty. Is uh, I see it. In, in a whole pile of, I don't know if you've guessed what this looks like um, or what it is actually. Um, so I'll, I'll give you guys a moment to just stare at it long enough to see if it actually uh, kind of comes across. Uh, hint, hint, we're he headed towards a car. So the first one uh, was a stockpile of tires. Uh, we've got um, waste glass. So you might say, well, where are we headed with all this? A whole bunch of pictures from landfill sites. And this is even better, right? So all the cars stacked up. And um, I guess the, the goal of the work that we do is really to be able to, in a way, appreciate um, the kind of resources that we as human beings um, throw away into landfill. And, and our goal is really to look well and truly beyond um, a conventional sort of recycling strategy where, of course, the goal is to convert plastic into plastic and glass into glass. And you can see there are so many different types of plastics uh, in a car and in a lot of the products that we use, whether it's electronics or what have you. Um, I think a lot of these types of materials um, indeed are complex because they are engineered to do the job for us. So glass, for example, in cars is designed as safety glass, um, so clearly it's meant to keep us safe, but by that same token, it actually becomes quite difficult. Um, I don't think that's going to actually play because you probably need... <laughs> Um, you probably need my USB stick. So that's all right. We'll, we can probably get to it at the end if we've got time. But what we are really looking at here is creating um, value-added alloys on the right. You can see we've created high-value, high-metallic, uh, high-value metallic products from a combination of waste glass and plastic. See, waste glass and plastic on the left reacted at high temperatures, and of course that has uh, produced high-value alloys for us. Uh, same thing, the story about rubber tires, using that in the process of making steel. So what we are really doing is um, looking at beyond the conventional recycling sort of strategy of saying, uh, well, you know, we'll convert rubber into rubber and so on. We actually are looking at the kinds of elements that are present. So glass contains silicon, so we produce alloys that actually uh, contain silicon. These are high value elements. Uh, of course, traditionally what you have to do is go and dig up your ground and dig up resources from the ground. So that's exactly what we are advocating, that we don't have to do that. We can look at our end of life resources and use that uh, to produce high value output. So that was an example of how we've produced steel uh, and it is commercially operating um, here in Sydney and also the technology has been taken up internationally. Uh, the reason for that, um, if you can sort of look at it at, at a simple level, that you got uh, elements like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, um, in, in a lot of these types of end-of-life products. I've, I've taken examples of polymers like uh, PET and a lot of the standard things around the house just to sort of illustrate that, you know, you can go around looking at these as products. You can call them CDs or water bottles and safety glasses, or you can actually see them as resources of elements. So when they truly get to the end of their life, they still don't have to go into landfill. They actually provide you uh, with um, these types of value-add elements. Rubber slippers, my all-time favorite, because I sort of would always get really irritated at home going, where is the other one? Oh my God, can't afford to throw this one away. So we started looking at the possibility of actually using these incredibly uh, beautiful, uh, obviously I had nothing to do with the layout and the d design of all of this. This is, this is me as an engineer looking at it going, wow, fantastic. When all this gets to the end of life and we've broken them, we can actually use uh, all those elements present in them. So the, the concept of, you know, the three R's, as much as we think that that's doing the job for the environment, we know very well it's not. So the reduce, reuse, recycle is not really doing a good enough job because we still end up putting a lot of this into landfill. So whether we're talking about stuff at home like carpets and e even when we just do simple refurb um, and we throw things away, they do end up in landfill and we might like to think the yellow recycling council bins and so on are great, but they're not not. Um, let's talk about e-waste. Again, something from home that we all love to kind of have. In fact, we probably sleep with it. I, not that I do. Um, but, uh, the, you know, I mean, I guess the, the 
the point about this is that now it's gone beyond our homes and into somebody else's home and someone else's backyard and done this, um, which is not very fair because let's face it, we're the ones who use it and we like to think that it's somebody else's problem. So I don't think that's quite a fair thing to do from my context. If I'm someone who's using electronic products, then I need to be able to see the ability to reform. So that's the fourth R, which is we are reforming these types of waste materials into high value products. So effectively, the kinds of outputs that I've shown you today, whether it's outputs that are coming from electronic waste containing copper, uh, tin, or from waste glass, um, that contains silicon. The idea really is that what you're doing is you're actually reforming it to get it to the point where it is truly highly valued product. And what that then means is, is it makes reforming waste actually economically viable. Because it's not good enough to say, well, let's create a solution that's not going to run because no one's willing to actually, you know, invest their time and effort into it. So our goal really is to work with industry partners who are willing to take the risk in terms of, of course, supporting the R&D, but also being the first to commercialize a lot of the work. Uh, and indeed, um, you know, when people talk about the fact that, oh, you know, manufacturing is dead in Australia and really it's never going to sort of take off. Um, for me, the other side, the other way of looking at it is that we've got to be able to create the manufacturing future that we want in this country. So when we look at these types of resources, just like some of the amazing, brilliant people here today are doing, is creating their, their own unique brand of what you mean by art and, and how you look at resources, whether you're using end-of-life products, as our very first uh, speaker showed us. Um, what, what we are really looking at here is the opportunity to say, if the manufacturing of the future is going to look at end-of-life products, well, it's got to make sense economically. It's got to be something that's highly valuable valued and that can be utilized. So ultimately what it should lead us to a future where we don't put any of this sort of stuff away into landfill. So hopefully leave you with the thoughts around the fourth R, which is not just about reduce, reuse, recycle, but the fourth R around reform that truly takes end of life resources and converts them into high value outputs uh, that hopefully also eliminates the need for manufacturing technologies that are highly polluting um, in the environment today. So it, it achieves both of those outcomes, takes things away from landfill, and actually reduces a lot of the polluting uh, problems that we see um, that, that our lifestyles have contributed to. Um, but hopefully the, the future is a positive one. We have got some amazing, clever students here, right here in Australia, uh, studying science, technology, and engineering. So um, I can assure you that, um, that the future is bright. Thank Thank you so much for having me here tonight.